Hey, how are you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with crank.com and with that metalstation.com. And today I'm getting to have a chat with Eddie and Brenz from Bison, who are due to drop their um, EP, Perfect Mistakes, on the 28th of May. And I think it's the first release in like 16 years for you guys. So um, I know there's a lot of new metal heads like me that are looking forward to it. Yeah, even longer than that, I think, bud. We put out um, our first EP within Earshot. We put out in 2000 and then Architect of Sound we put out in um, 2002. Yep. And then we, we, they were both out on um, Shock Records and Faultline. And then um, we recorded a stack of demos uh, again with DW Norton. And um, that was at about 2004. Okay. And so they, we, we did do a limited pressing of those, but we didn't put them in stores or anything. And um, yeah, so we get a few messages from people that are chasing after them. But um, yeah, they're a pretty limited run. Yeah. So and it- yeah, that, and they were out about 2004. So yeah, it has been a long time between drinks. Yeah. What what was the um inspiration to kind of get get the band back together and get get rocking again, man? Well, for us it was uh the offer of a gig. So, you know, someone actually asked us if we wanted to do a support. And uh we kind of just rang around and asked the boys if they would be vaguely interested in this. And everyone kind of said, Yeah, let's get in a room. And we jumped in a room and it, it was very obvious very quickly that we weren't going to be able to do a gig anytime soon but uh, it had been years and years and years but you know we did enjoy being in a room again we started you know with the old songs and we started to kind of play those and and within a little while we'd started writing new gear and we uh one of the first songs that we actually wrote um is begin again which is the the new single off this ep and and we kind of all agreed once we'd done that that there was a bit of life in the old girl and, and we thought we'd see it through. Yeah, so so it was a pretty good feeling when you all kind of got back in that jam room again and, you know, playing again, kind of all look at each other and go, yeah, let's make a fucking push for this, man. Let's get this back going again. Yeah, it was. Um, it was good fun because it, and it's all the same dudes that we finished with last time and we never really sort of drew a line in the sand last time. We... I think it was just one of us was traveling and then one thing led to another and it's like, wasn't the right time to keep pursuing it back then. Even though we were pretty happy doing what we were doing, but um, yeah, it just became basically an extended break. Um, There was never anyone quitting, never anyone saying, that's it, I've had enough, Um, fuck is all. Um, (laughs) That conversation might still come, we never know, (laughs) but um, it hasn't come in the last 25 years. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit about that track "Begin Again"? Since we're, we're chatting about that, can you tell us a little bit about that musically and um, lyrically, man? I'll, I'll talk musically, Brandon. You can talk yeah. lyrically, but you know the the riff basically came from Richie De Silva, our uh, guitar guru, and um, you know Richie's done a lot of work with Super Heist recently. He's their live guitarist, and uh, you know played in in some other really really great bands, and he's just a, a riff god and. He, he came up with the riff and, and we we mucked around with it a little bit and um, it, it just seemed to have a good flow for us. And, um, you know, what we liked about it was that it, it did kind of still have elements of the old bison in it, but it kind of felt like it had something a little bit new to it as well. So I think that's what, you know, got the juices flowing is because we felt like we had something that, um, you know, to add to what we had done in the past and, and that was begin again. Yep. Yeah, and then I guess um, sort of thematically, um, we went once we started writing again, and we thought we'll write a few new tunes and make a make a record. I thought I wanted to delve a little bit deeper than what we've done in the past, and I guess one thing um, that we do have going for us is that we've got a lot. We've we've had a lot lot of life experience in the last sort of fifteen years or so. Um, it, all, all sorts of things, I guess, going from sort of young men to uh, old bulls. Um, we've we've had, a, you know, your marriages, marriage breakdowns, kids, addictions, all sorts of stuff, death um, of loved ones and things. So we thought, oh, well, we can sort of tap into a lot of that stuff um, and get it out of our systems and share it with people. Um, and so we wanted to we wanted to delve a little bit deeper into some of these personal issues. 
Um, begin again, really, yeah, it's about reflecting on some of those things that at the time seemed traumatic, but they help to make people, um, you know, stronger, um, more interesting, more well-rounded and things. So it's a matter of, yeah, just sort of reflecting on these difficult things that life's thrown at a few of us over the years. And um, yeah, and sort of think about how they might have helped shape us into stronger um, stronger men like we are today. Yeah, I, I really did um, get into a lot of the, the songwriting into this because I've kind of had one of those years that's touched on just about everything you mentioned in there in the last six months of my, myself, as well as, you know, with losses in the family and everything. So for, for me, when I got this EP and chucked it in to have a little bit of a sneaky listen before the interview today. It, it was an album that I have just been playing nonstop since I got to start listening to it yesterday. It is um, the, the different themes and influences that the, the songwriting touches on as well as, you know, like take your place, you got a million miles stained and the latest one with blindside is just, um, it really does hit you. If you listen to those lyrics and you take all that in as well. And then with the, the musical voicing on this with it as well, it just kind of, marries up perfectly yeah thanks, thanks John. That's, that's that's really what we were hoping to achieve through this like once we got back in the room and we said look it's going to take a fair bit of commitment guys because you know we've got 10 kids between us um <laughs> and we've all got jobs and you know pretty busy lives and um and we thought well if we're going to do it we want to make it make it something important yep. um for us and for people to really feel that's that's what we're hoping to achieve through this. Yeah, it, it did. It has a great, great, great sound to it. And, you know, I know a lot of fans of Bison are going to be stoked to get this EP into their stereos and give it a good old play, as well as new listeners as well. You're probably going to find a lot of new fans as well because it has been a few years since you've you've come across um, and brought out new material. So it's probably you are excited about reaching some new audiences too, I dare say. Well, Jai, uh, when we last released, I think it was MySpace. Uh, that, that was how we were reaching people. When we first started, we actually used to do a physical letter drop. So we would print out a newsletter and we would send it physically to our, uh, our fans that we had. So like the landscape has changed dramatically. And, you know, for us, that, that's opened up some really, really good avenues. So one of the other reasons why we, we did get motivated to get back together is we decided to upload the um, back catalogue to streaming services. So we, we had never done that. And we'd had, you know, through our Facebook, uh, a few people asking where can they get the old tunes? And, and we thought, oh, you know, what the hell? We may as well put them up. So we, we added them to all streaming services. And, you know, you, you can look at the background data from that and, you know, all of a sudden you, you've got a couple of plays, you know, from Moscow and, and in the States and you've got, you know, South America is still really, really big on their new metal. So, you know, we, we get a lot of feedback from South America. Um, you know, we kind of thought, gee, you know, it's, there's just people interested in what we did 16 years ago. So, you know, like if we did release something new, um, I, I think that we can reach a bunch of new people. And, since then, you know, we have had to create uh, Instagram and Facebook and all that sort of stuff and, you know, kind of learn how to, how to use Attack that it all as a resource, you know. So it, it's been a real learning curve for us, um, but it's something that we've really enjoyed. And you probably notice it too, because you, you're doing the, the management duties as well, double duties as well as drums there, um, that, that now it's kind of like it, it has its advantages and disadvantages as well. You can get your music out to a lot more people and you can reach a lot more ears. And as we were chatting before about internet radio with what the faction's doing here in Australia and really, really plugging the Aussie metal scene. And then you got what I'm doing with that metal station is really committed on supporting the underground metal scene all over the world. It's kind of reaching these different avenues and find you know getting this music to your ears as well is probably a lot more than what as you're saying handing out flyers and then myspace these days is you can get to a lot more people and a lot more ears yeah look yeah. i don't think we've yeah, found too more, many um, drawbacks you know yeah sorry Brandon. He, yeah i was gonna say you can do it in a more targeted way now like yep. i suppose when we were sort of hanging things up last time it was really you'd get a little bit of a play on triple j how many of their listeners were into sort of stuff that we were doing you'd never know um same with the odd spin on triple m back in the day um and otherwise it's yeah pbs and triple r were doing some heavy shows 
Um, but nowadays, yeah, with the with the likes of you guys and the faction and and your colleagues all around the world that are doing the same type of thing, you can really you can really get your music to people worldwide in, in this com- in this community of ours. Yep, and we've got Sam from Motion Grove. Oh, it's my niece. Uh, we've got Sam from Motion Grove doing a little bit of producer duties there. Can you tell me about his involvement? Yeah, it's an interesting one, Jai. We talk about Instagram and um, you know the the emergence of social media and and what it can do for bands. Um, we, as a band, really enjoyed what Ocean Grove did, and I literally sent him a Instagram um, direct message and just said, hey, man, do you have any time? Would you work on this? And I didn't hear anything back for a couple of days. And then eventually he's like, yeah, man, I know your band. No worries. I'd love to work with you. So, um, you know, same with the artist that did our artwork. Um, You know, he's based out of Las Vegas. It was just someone that we really enjoyed on Instagram that we found and we you know basically went to the top so you know we kind of decided if we're going to do this let's do it right so we wanted to work with the right people and we thought why not why not go to to the artist who's in las vegas why not go for the the guy who produces the music that we like today and and that's the world has got smaller um you no longer have to use the contacts that you directly have You, you can put a direct message out into the ether of the internet and see what comes back. And, and maybe that delivers you um, a producer like Sam. And look, Sam um, is a whiz kid. He's 24 years old. He has produced that many records now. It's not funny. Um, and he plays basically all the instruments in Ocean Grove and he produces all their music. And, you know, he um, we, we went to his place and, and um, recorded some stuff with him. So well, I'll let Brent talk you through it. It was a pretty... Um, a pretty strange process for us because just as we were starting to get into the meat of of putting this record together, Melbourne was thrown into a lockdown, which uh, ended up lasting, you know, 130 days or something. So even when we came out of it and before it, we couldn't go to Sam's house and we couldn't go to each other's houses. Um, So, yeah, Brent, if you want to expand on that. Yeah, it was. Um, it sure was. A, I mean, it's an interesting time for everybody, I suppose, that that 2020. But um, yeah, we sort of. I don't know if we would have pulled through if we'd known what was in store. But it was almost like every time we'd try anything, there'd be an obstacle thrown at it. Um, but we'll probably write the next record about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we started off in the traditional way of just going the way that we used to and the way that we knew how in the past was going to a studio, book some time track the drums and then the plan was to continue that way with doing guitars and all the rest of it in studio um but yeah after we got the drums done then COVID hit so the studios were shut we couldn't do anything our producer at the time um couldn't even go into his studio to get his files um so it was just sort of one disaster after another and then we we ended up all just buying some audio interfaces and things and recording bits and pieces from home. And I mean, the guys in the band were in touch with each other every other day, really just sort of demoing and back and forth. Um, And then I was at home doing demo vocals and then emailing them around to the boys. And yeah, we were just sort of refining it over the the period of time. Um, And then, yeah, then we'd book some time with Sam um, from Ocean Grove at his place and yeah, as soon as we'd book it, there'd be a new a new rule about curfews or about the distance we were allowed to travel. And so they kept getting aborted. And then ultimately we were able to go out there and, um, yeah, you know, mask up when we get into the house and all of that sort of stuff still was pretty crazy. Um, but then, yeah, we settled in with Sam and he became a key part of the project for us. Um, yeah, it just is a pleasure to work with great ideas um, and helped us sort of yeah, get help get the best out of us and the best out of the project. And um, yeah, it was a dream. And, and I think, yeah, we've sort of made a commitment with Sam that we'll, con- we'll continue to work with him in the future and he'll continue to work with us. So yeah, going to hold him to that. 
it's great to see these um these great um young producers and musicians coming through and they don't get enough recognition here in australia like unless you really like seek out and go oh this person's doing that it's hard for you to really miss because it doesn't kind of get as much promotion here the australian heavy metal scene and things like that and the great producers like what sam's doing and there's a few around australia that are just doing some unreal work production wise yeah, and they have a massive impact on the record. I mean, yeah. like we, we sort of, Sam said to us at the beginning and, and we agreed with him that, you know, we want to take him in and, and have him part of the band for this project, more or less, you know, to, um, yeah, he, he'll bring out the best of us and we'll we'll help drive him to get where we want to be as well. You know, it's a really um, a good collaborative approach that we all took. Yeah, and it's kind yeah, of... I think a good, I think a good producer... Um, definitely has a look and has a listen to what we've done in the past and, and and wanted to add to that creatively to say, okay, what do you want to achieve in the future? So um, there's no point coming back and just doing what you did before. Um, and, and that was something that we really took on board. And I, I think we were riding that way anyway, but, but basically just giving us a different sound and, you know, a different experience working with a different producer um, who saw things with a little bit more of a modern lens, you know, was a massive help to us. And um, it's made us see things differently. And in extension to what Bren was saying about, um, you know, the guys writing uh, remotely now, like we were nowhere near remotely set up to do that. Yeah. And, um, you know, when these challenges came along, uh, we had to gear up. And now that we've geared up, it's going to change the way Bison exists in the future. So, um, you know, we, uh, we're still, you know, getting this record out now, but there's already talk of when we um, start to jam again and, and, and jams are going to be different now, you know, like um, we can, we can jam in a room together, but we can also jam remotely um, or we can send files and it's a really different experience for us, but I also think it's quite a productive one. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, all of the new things that we found about this process uh, we really don't have any negatives for you, John. Like it's, nah, it's, uh, it's everything's great. And you can use it as an um, advantage going forward, as you were saying, you all got families, you've all got lives outside of what you're doing. So sometimes it's not, you know, that viable to try and get you all into a bloody room to gig or jam out ideas. Now you can do it all through through this kind of medium remotely. Yeah, no and, when, and when people lose their driver's licenses too, Joy. <laughs> <laughs> so can i want to ask about the track blindside can you tell us a little bit about that track i believe that's the, the latest one out isn't it single yeah so we um we had that premiered on the faction last night um that was probably the last one we wrote for the record um i guess musically it's a bit different it's a bit off time and things um but what we liked about it is it's got i'm not sure if it's being in a weird time signature that just sort of adds this tension to it and that's what we were really going for in this song, just a, a tension and a build up, um, you know, with a big fat breakdown in the middle. Um, and that's sort of what the theme of the song's about too. It's about, you know, the pressures that life puts on us, um, mainly through, yeah, work. And I guess what, we've, what we sometimes do is try and achieve these things. And then once you get them, you think, shit, I don't know, this, is, this feels like it's almost too much to bear. Um, and so it's about yeah, sort of striving for for these for greatness, and then uh, once you get it, you feel like you got the world on your shoulders, and um, yeah, and the pressures that come with it. So that's yeah, this one. What it's about. This one almost ended up on the cutting room floor, and uh, there there is one song from uh, those sessions that that has, and we didn't think it was going to be that one, and so um, our guitarist uh, Andy Mack spent uh, a couple of months just noodling away with Blindside. And uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't until he came around to the, the final idea that's on the record that we actually saw the potential in it and he basically resurrected it. So yeah, it was it was done for this song, I reckon. And it was really not not part of the plans and for it to um, you know, have, have risen up to being the, the third song that we've released off this record is, you know, is um, yeah, a real surprise to all of us. Um, but it's it's turned out to be a song that universally we all really, really respect. Yeah, I'm glad it didn't end up on the cutting room floor. It is a killer track. Um, <laughs> where's the best place where people can get along and support you? I know you're going to be up on all the streaming cycles, but for people like me, where's the best place to go buy physicals? 
Um, we're going to be having them up on Bandcamp. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I plug Bandcamp all the time because I'm like, when I oh, see sweet. you talk to bands, yeah, I don't have to on Bandcamp. Yeah. It is. And you can buy your music yeah, through there as well. And you don't feel bad about, like for me, if I'm listening to an album, I want to buy it as well. You know, with Bandcamp, you can still buy the digital, have it on your phone, listen to it. You yeah. know what I mean? You can get your merch through there and it does make it a lot more simple for, for people like me that just love to have, you know, physical copies or the digital album. You've got to buy it because I believe artists work their fucking ass off like Bison did with his EP. And, you know, I think, you know, it's great to get those Spotify listens up, but to really support a band, go buy the fucking mm. album, go buy some merch and really go see live shows when they're playing. That's that's what's really going to support the band and the scene going forward. Yeah, preaching to the yeah. choir there, Jai. We yeah, uh, couldn't agree more, mate. So, um, yeah, look, we'll we'll have uh, CDs available. Um, cool. You know, maybe in the future, vinyl. That that would be something we'd really really like to do. But um, you know, vinyls uh, obviously got some restrictions when it comes to overheads. But um, the CDs uh, are getting printed at the moment, and um, we'll we'll be able to actually do a, a triple pack. Yeah. So we have some leftovers of the um, of the EPs that we made back in the day. So. Um, you know, hopefully that appeals to some people who, who would like to have the, the the three EPs that were released by Boss and, and we'll be sending those out, um, you know, after this week when we get some orders, um, uh, the store will open after we release the EP this Friday. Awesome. I look forward to it. And um, we're talking about live. Is there any plans for some shows coming up? Have you got anything in the works or just announcing it? Wait and see. Not at the moment, Jai. So, um, look, you know, Melbourne looks like it's potentially going into a, another lockdown uh, as we speak. So um, there, there are a lot of venues that, you know, we used to frequent in the past that uh, still don't have gigs on. And, yeah. um, you know, there's, there's a lot of risk involved in um, getting out on the road at the moment, uh, you know, with border closures and that sort of stuff. So uh, we don't have any plans at this point to to get out on the road, but that doesn't mean that we're not gearing up to be ready for when we can. So, um, you know, that process has begun and um, when we can do it, Jai will be, will be ready and uh, hopefully we can see everybody out there. Oh, that'll be good. It'll get everyone a chance to grab this EP, Perfect Mistakes. Go check out their back catalogue if you haven't checked out Bison's back catalogue. Know all the bloody songs. When you're there, you'll be singing away and having a great old bloody time. Guys, um, friends, Eddie, this has no been way. an absolute pleasure to have a chat with you guys, man. Perfect Mistakes drops May 28th. Everyone, grab it when it drops. Put it in your stereos. Turned up really fucking loud for the neighbours. Any last words, shout outs, or thank yous you want to add in, guys? Hey, thanks heaps, Jai, for having us on your show. Um, thanks to your listeners. Yeah, support Australian heavy music. Get out there. See you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Jai. Thanks to everyone out there. And uh, check out Perfect Mistakes comes out this Friday on all good services everywhere. Good on you. Legends. Cheers, guys.